Coping with guilt. So guilt is a very common and again, very normal emotion to have when caring for your loved one. It is also an emotion that can cause great stress, zap your energy, and really make you feel immobilized. So some common thoughts that we hear when around guilt are often guilt over treating my loved one poorly before the diagnosis of dementia. So with this, we we can't get caught up in the should haves, the would haves. We really have to focus on each day and what that brings and make it the best as possible going forward. So we want to keep moving forward, right? You didn't know, we didn't know that this was a medical condition causing all of these problems, right? We don't know what we don't know. Guilt about a reaction you had or impatience. Now, impatience is one of those mindset skills that we talked about earlier in mindset and philosophy that we really need to cultivate. And this is one of those that's really easy to lose. It's easy to become impatient and we feel guilty about it. But the reality reality is we're humans, right? And we're working to train ourselves to have better reactions. And we'll talk more specifically about how to actually train ourselves, which is simple daily activities in our next lesson with coping with frustration. Guilt about not spending enough time with your loved one. You know, we can only do what we can do and be realistic in our expectations, right? Realistic being the key word here. Often things that make us feel guilty are unrealistic expectations or misconceptions. Now, this is a really key sentence here. I'm going to read it again. Often things that make us feel feel guilty are unrealistic expectations or misconceptions. So really wrap your brain around this one because it is really, really key. When you can conceptualize this in your brain, it kind of takes the guilt away, right? Setting up realistic expectations for ourselves. Guilt over wanting it to end or negative thoughts about a loved one. Now, I had this one myself. I had a dream um, more than once about smothering my mom. And boy, that was a tough one for me. I, I'd, uh, I had a lot of guilt about it. But then I learned to forgive myself about having that dream and realized that was completely normal. I mean... This disease and being a caregiver uh, lends itself to think in a way we didn't think was possible, right? That we didn't even know we had it in us. And that's the result of being a caregiver to someone with dementia, right? So completely normal. Guilt over getting angry or losing my temper. Yeah, it's, it's easy to get angry when you're caregiving, right? I don't believe there's anything more frustrating or maddening or exhausting than being a caregiver for someone with dementia. I mean, it truly can push you to your limits. And some caregivers experience guilt and harsh self-criticism. In addition, if they feel it all negatively, like anxious or angry about their caregiving duties, right? It's as if we think, it's as if we're dreading that some aspect of caregiving means that we no longer love our husband, our wife, our mom, or our dad. But having negative feelings is a normal part of family life, right? So in the years before dementia kicked in, there are probably some instances where you were irritable towards one another without so much self-blame, right? Caregiving doesn't make us angels. We're still cranky human beings. We still are. So there's also one word out there that causes a lot of guilt, and that word is should, right? So I should do everything to keep my husband home longer. I should visit my mom more often. I should do more activities with my wife. I should, I should, I should. So that being said, there are two ways we can easily shift our feelings of guilt just by flipping a couple words. Now, the first thing we need to do is stop shooting all over yourself. (laughs) And we want to shift should into a want. So how do we do this? We want to write down on one side of the paper what you should do, and on the other side, write down what you want to do. So with this shift, we tend to find ways to do things that better utilize our time, and then it becomes a desire rather than a should that translates into guilt if we don't do it. So we remove the guilt. We can realistically, again, that word realistically, can accomplish something. Like I said earlier, Often guilt is associated with unrealistic expectations. 
So here's an example of how that looks. So on the left hand side you've got your shoulds and on the right hand side you have your wants. So the first example is I should take my mom grocery shopping once a week. But it's a two hour drive round trip, mom moves slow in the grocery store, I'm exhausted after work and it's just, it's a lot and I don't want to do it. So that comes in, then all that guilt shows up, right? When you don't want to do it and you don't do it, good old guilt is hanging there. So instead shift it into a want. I want to help my mom with her grocery shopping. Here's how I can step in and help her with her groceries. So perhaps you shop once a week, and that once a week shopping trip, you also cook dinner and have dinner with her that evening. Or perhaps there's an option for online um, grocery shopping and have stuff delivered to her, right? There's options there. So how you can realistically step in to make this happen without making you feel guilty. So the second example, I should do more activities with my loved one, but I don't have time. Shifted into, I want to do meaningful activities with my loved one to connect and help my loved one feel less anxious or agitated. I can do this by having him help me around the house, give him a dusting rag, have him help you dust or folding laundry or something like that, or an activity that he likes to do, or you like to do together and order some simple activities on line for him to do or for you to do together. The next one, I should visit my dad daily and help him so that he can stay home as long as possible. Shifting it into the want, I want my dad to live as independently as possible. So a realistic expectation would be maybe siblings could help and could step in and help out with that. Or perhaps there's potential for in-home care. Or maybe a simple retrofit would help him stay home longer. So do you really need to take all over all your dad's daily activities? Of course not. There's ways to actually manage this and make it more realistic for you. So the second thing we can do is shift guilt into forgiveness and compassion for ourselves. So you can't be perfect 24 seven. It's impossible to be in perfect control of how you feel all the time. So the first thing we want to do is assess your situation. Did you do the best that you could with the info you had at the time? So caregiving is a fluid job. It's constantly changing with the needs of your loved one. You must make the best choice with the information you have at the time. So trust your instinct, trust your knowledge of your loved one, and reimagine what caregiving looks like in your life. Maybe it means tapping into your help wanted list or joining a support group. Maybe it means checking out a local senior living community, opening up lines of communication and asking for help and ultimately giving yourself grace. Secondly, we need to understand the facts. Just because we feel guilty does not mean we can realistically change the situation or the emotional experience. So the key to forgive yourself is to be able to forgive yourself for thoughts of guilt and love yourself knowing you are doing the best that you can, right? So keep looking at the big picture. Although you may be stressed with a particular situation now, it won't last forever. See, look at the sacrifices you make for your loved one and realize that you're doing a great job every day, every day with all the little things that happen, you're doing the best that you can. This is a difficult time, there's no doubt, right? And it will lend itself, like I said, to thinking in ways that we did not know we had, and that is okay and normal, completely normal. There are so many moving parts with this disease, and you have more than likely, undoubtedly, done far better with the big picture than with these little guilt things that you might be hung up on. So just let him go and shift it into forgiveness, right? And stop shooting all over yourself. So to wrap up this um, coping with guilt lesson, my good friend Shannon is doing a is offered a wonderful meditation for you um, that will be right after the end of this lesson that I encourage you to do. It's about meditation all around guilt and, and coping, and, and it's just a really lovely meditation. And she is um, with a yoga studio and retreat center called Song of the Morning, which is located in Michigan, and their website is songofthemorning.org if you're interested in other um, classes or meditations that they might be doing as well. So um, next up is coping with frustration. But before we do that, finish off this lesson with the beautiful meditation from Shannon. Thanks and be well.